Hi students, welcome to new lecture again. So here I am going to discuss about the what is the difference between the centripetal force and the centrifugal force. Many times there is a misconception between the centripetal force and the centrifugal force. Many students think like that whenever there is a particle moving in a circular motion like this, then there is a centripetal force and then there is a centrifugal force as well. So these forces are balanced. So then sometimes this misconception arises that if the forces are balance then this particle should go in a straight line why it is moving in a circle like this why it is accelerating why there is a centripetal acceleration if there is a centrifugal force and if there is a centripetal force and both are equal to each other then the particle should move in a straight line because there should not be any acceleration and then there is one more force which is tangential force which is responsible for the change in the magnitude of the velocity or change in the magnitude of basically the speed right but right now i have taken let's suppose the velocity of magnitude of velocity of this particle is constant speed is constant or otherwise you can say that the motion is a uniform motion so then this particle will have only one acceleration toward the center which is the centripetal acceleration so let's understand it with from a very basic thing let's suppose there is a stone and you have tied it with a rope you have tied it through the center with a rope and then you are rotating it then of course you can understand so then of course you can understand that uh, there will be a tension acting on the object in the inward direction that's why we tie it with a rope so that we can apply a tension and we can rotate this object in the circle the same way like if we take a nucleus so then and on the nucleus we have positive charge and then there are the electron let's suppose this is a hydrogen atom so we have the proton at the center and then there is the electron like this and now because there is a attraction force between the electron and the proton that is a force which is acting in the toward the center which is providing a acceleration sufficient for the motion in the circle so that force which is acting on the object which causes the circular motion that is the centripetal force okay so this force makes the object rotate in a circular path if that force is not there then the object is not going to rotate in a circular path right and again this are the real forces like for example if we take a bicycle and then we are moving on a road then if there is a circular turn so at that time the friction of the road on the bicycle will act toward the center of that uh, curvature of the road and because of that we are able to rotate and we are able to turn our vehicle like this there is a tension force when we rotate a object in a circular path and we need to apply the tension like this if earth is rotating around the sun then the of course the gravitation between the earth and the sun is responsible for the motion of earth in a kind of circular or the elliptical path right so then the third thing is that these forces which are the real forces they will act toward the center so centripetal force will act on the object toward the center because we need to provide the centripetal acceleration that expression for the centripetal acceleration we know that is v square divided by r if you don't know this derivation in some of the video i will do derive this and i will post on my channel so of course you can watch that video and if you don't know the other concept of the newton's laws and the other things of course there are the other videos available on my channel so you can go through that okay so coming to this that whenever there is centripetal force that centripetal force will act toward the center that's why we are giving this name centripetal so these are the real forces like tension now tension will be a centripetal force then there will be a gravitation if there is a gravitation force so then gravitation will be a tension uh, that centripetal force right now how much will be the centripetal force so centripetal force we can calculate using the newton's second law because we are looking from the ground okay we are sitting on the ground and then we are saying that total forces acting on this particle are just the centripetal forces because i am not taking any tangential acceleration okay so then this 
force uh, we can say according to the newton's second law that net forces acting on the particle are equal to mass multiplied by acceleration the acceleration of the particle is v square divided by r toward the center now what happens generally the radial direction is taken like this this is radially outward this is r vector which starts from the center of circle and it is up to the object this is r vector so of course the r cap is going to be like this so r cap is radially outward now because the centripetal acceleration is radially inward that's why if i want to write down the centripetal acceleration i can in the vector format i can put it like this v square divided by r multiplied by r cap now according to the newton's law total force equals to mass into acceleration that's why total centripetal forces will be equal to minus mv square divided by r multiplied by r cap sometime we will also use this expression m omega square r r cap okay so this is the centripetal force now very important thing which i have not mentioned is that uh, these forces are responsible for change in the direction of the motion or direction of velocity and another important information about the centripetal forces is that work done by these forces is zero why zero because the these forces act always perpendicular to the motion so like if the particle is moving on a circle it is moving on a curved path like that and at this moment the centripetal force is like this then the force becomes like this and we know work done by the perpendicular force to the motion is zero so that's why the elemental work done becomes zero for a very minute displacement total work done becomes zero if we calculate the total work done for the complete path in a circular motion so then the net work done of course is going to be zero now this is again very important information we will also use this if there is any question related to the work energy bar and the circular motion or especially the vertical circular motion now coming to the centrifugal forces before this you need to understand the concept of the pseudo force so of course i have mentioned uh, in one video about the pseudo force so you can watch that video so you can search on my channel or i will put the link so what is the pseudo force when we take a non inertial frame then to adjust with the newton's laws we need to apply a extra force which is not a real force it is just a mathematical adjustment that we are doing in the newton's laws to apply the newton's laws in a non inertial frame when the observer is in a non inertial frame okay so generally what we say that the forces are not dependent on the frame of reference so like there is a gravitational force that won't change if it is 10 newton then that is 10 newton only but the problem lies with the acceleration acceleration is dependent on the frame of reference so if we say newton's second law total force equals to mass into acceleration right so if forces are not changing but the acceleration is changing so then we will get a different acceleration for the different observer right we should get the different acceleration for the different observer but the newton's laws gives us just the one acceleration and the, that's why the condition to apply the newton's laws is that we need to take them in the inertial frame of reference it means the acceleration of these frame of reference with respect to ground is zero fine so now what to do to apply the newton's laws in a non inertial frame that adjustment is the pseudo force we need to apply a pseudo force so what happens if you want to analyze the circular motion with respect to the object which is performing the circular motion if we consider that object itself as the frame of reference instead of sitting on the ground if my observer sits on the object itself then with respect to him the net forces will become the acceleration will become zero now he is going to think if he is okay he is newton himself so then he is going to say that look because the acceleration is zero so it means the object should be in the equilibrium right the net forces should be zero yes so net forces should be zero but that is not true there are the real forces on this object acting toward the center 
so that's why now the adjustment is that you need to apply a pseudo force and the pseudo force is equal to minus of m object multiplied by a frame having known this concept of the pseudo force now we are going to take this object itself as the frame of reference and we know that there is a centripetal acceleration acting on the object toward the center okay what is that acceleration v square divided by r so that's why we are going to say that there is a pseudo force on this object in the radially outward direction look because there is a negative sign here so that's why whatever the acceleration direction is there with respect to ground opposite to that we will get a pseudo force so because the centripetal acceleration is toward the center that's why the pseudo force on the object will be equal to mv square divided by r m is the mass of the object v square divided by r is the acceleration but that is toward the center so there is a negative and there is a negative of this so negative negative becomes positive multiplied by r cap so that's why on the object there is a pseudo force radially outward there is pseudo force radially outward now because this pseudo force is radially outward that's why we use a similar term kind of centripetal centripetal means toward the center and the centrifugal means toward the away from center so this is a non real force which is coming because we take the object as the frame of reference and the direction of that is away from the center so that's why we call it as the centrifugal force right so this is nothing a but this is just a pseudo force right okay now with respect to the person of course if he is going to apply the newton's law he will apply the newton's first law then he will say total forces are zero and in the total forces we have the centripetal and we have the centrifugal equals to zero and we can say f centripetal equals to negative of f centrifugal and we know of course that the centrifugal is radially outward centripetal is radially inward so there is a negative sign in them as well so otherwise we can directly say that the in magnitude f centripetal should be equal to f centrifugal okay now look this is coming only if we take the object as the frame of reference now tell me with respect to that frame of reference the object for sure is going to move in a straight line isn't it right yes but the problem is that that frame is also a accelerated frame and which is having a variable acceleration so that's why this object is rotating in a circle if we look from the ground right so when we are going to solve the question of the circular motion we will prefer to solve using the centrifugal force because that is we will directly get the equation from there otherwise we can also solve using the centripetal force total force equals to mass into acceleration that that by that also we can get the answer there will not be any problem so i hope you must have understood what is the concept of the centrifugal force and the centripetal force don't be confused in that that uh, the centripetal whenever we are going to apply we are going to use the newton second law with respect to ground and when we are going to apply the centrifugal of course we have said that where is the our frame of reference or the observer that is on the object then only we will we are going to consider the centrifugal force so then we are going to apply the newton's first law for that so be clear in the concept especially in the physics otherwise the problem would be that you will reach at somewhere the negative or the opposite answers and you are going to get the negatives okay so be clear be crystal clear in the concepts and then do solve the questions thank you very much